Mm-hmm. Hi, how are you? Uh, Eric Stories here. Yeah, my name is Eric. If you're new here, Eric Stories is about uh, two individuals normally, that being you and me. We have conversations around issues of everyday life, money, sex relationships, anything that makes adult life uh, better bearable. And, bearable. and bearable. And today I have uh, such an honor to speak to somebody I call my friend. You know, friendship is always loosely thrown around these days, but this person is very close and dear to my heart. We've traveled the journey of life together for a long time. And uh, I'm talking about none other than Bien, Aime, Alusa. Speaking. <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I love you. And uh, because of many becauses. Many times people realize that I know you. They think because I've worked on radio and then on television now. Uh-uh, to no, man. This guy was my neighbor <laughs> <laughs> in our younger years. You, you know, so so th- 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 you've done three things. I've never told you, and I think it's a good opportunity to share today. Three things that uh, have stemmed our friendship. And I don't want to make this conversation subjective, mm-hmm. but I have to say this. Um, I am a believer. The Bible says that uh, he who has a friend must show himself friendly. Mm -hmm. So in three ways, you've shown yourself friendly. One time my mother was sick and uh, it was at your height of Nishike. You know, when you had your shirts (laughs) off and you're (laughs) wiggling your waist. And then you asked me where I was on the phone and I said, I'm at the hospital. I think it was on a Sunday. And you came to the lobby of the hospital. We were three of us, you, myself, and my mom. Mm. And nurses were hovering around you. That was the first time you exemplified friendship. Wow, man. Second thing you did on that same week, they needed blood for my mother. And your bloods were compatible. Yeah. You went and lied on a gurney and you gave blood. First thing you did. Second thing you did, I was starting my career out on radio. No, no that's the second. This the, 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 second. That, the first thing was my mother. Uh-huh. Now this is the second thing. Uh-huh. I was starting my career on radio and I was working with Jimmy Gathu uh-huh. on uh, Radio Milele. In moments notice, I called you and said, look man, I've uh, negotiated a segment to be interviewing artists. And because you're an artist, you want to come over. You came with the entire boys. And we did a show for four hours Imagine. in Swahili. Yeah. And then there are so many to mention. A third thing, very important. These are the three for me. I was desperately back in the country, broke <laughs> out of <laughs> pocket. I was from South Africa. My mother that just died. And I had just some little money. And I was having lunch with you at your house. And uh, in sort of desperation, I asked, what do you think I should do, man? I'm thinking of moving out, but I only have this much. And then you said... What is the worst that can happen? Is you pay rent and then you run out of money and move out. So pay the rent. Do you have people in your life who exemplify friendship in that way you do? I would say you, man. You know, like you exemplify (laughs) friendship though every day. Every day, man. Me, I love you for your mind and you've just made me a better human being in general. Every time I speak with you, you sharpen me, you know. Like watching you grow also as a human being yeah. makes me a better person. Yeah. So yeah, you you know the reason I was asking that is because fame can be very lonely. People think mm. that because uh, they you know they see the glitz and the glamour. Of it's your not life. lonely at all, man. I have Sauti Sol. I have Eric. Yeah. My wife is my friend. I've then I have I have friends, yeah. friends. Yeah. Who have held me down, man. Yeah. I have a team around me. I like that you're very loyal. I I think you're the only person I've seen who's very consistent over the years in terms of. The people are like I know when I come to your party, I'll see mm. the same faces. Oh, yeah, yeah. How do you do? Is that intentional? It is. Friendships are intentional, but also it's just the energy of the people I attract yeah. based on the person that I am and yeah. my leadership style in my organization. Yeah. And who I am as a person, like I'm meaning to our two. The name BNMA means well loved. Yeah. And I, I, honestly, I've been well loved. Like, yeah. And I've just been very fortunate to have people around me who really care about how I feel. Who really care that I make the best art and that, that I'm the best version of myself? Yeah, I am so blessed. Yeah, are you yeah. happy? I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Like I'm adult anxious, <laughs> but I'm happy. <laughs> what keeps you up at night? Uh, what keeps me like in terms of what makes me anxious? Yeah, uh, what keeps me up at night is just the uncertainty of man. The world is opening up, then it's mm, not opening up. The COVID. Yeah, this it's a it's a season when I can't plan for the next six six months 
without you know fidgeting yeah. and um, we've been planning to do the soul festival for such a long time yeah. Yeah. and then now that it's just about to happen then there's new variants coming up there's just always something that makes the journey more interesting i know? i derive my peace from knowing this i read this somewhere you know i like sharing antidotes mm. from my reading a stability is a mirage mm-hmm. cuz even when you think you're sure you're always unsure think about it pre covid you'd wake up in the morning fully well then a car hits you and you lose your spinal cord <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, you yeah. know? it still it still is like but you know like just people like to plan ahead and have control mm. and seem like it, it, life is life is better when you f- seem to be in control yeah but uh i, I just say that hard work beats everything mm. even as even on certain times because mm. like when it's covid season we recorded so much music and you know like no matter how it goes the music will always be out i know you do a lot of interviews and you're asked about your album what inspired the song so i'm going to shy away from that i'm sure if you're watching you'd know where to find <laughs> that sort of an interview there's a guy called gene siskel mm-hmm. he's a film critic in chicago film critic yes so hey. they were having a conversation with oprah once mm-hmm. and out of the blue he asked oprah a very interesting question i find it interesting even to me he asked oprah what do you know for sure what do you know for sure based on different subject matters i mean you've been in the industry for a long time now you're married i mean you've dated and broken up so i want to ask you for the benefit of the person watching what do i know for sure what you know for sure about fame well what i know for sure about fame is that it's a drug like no other there's nothing in the world that can prepare you for fame but it's an energy that if you that can be channeled in for good or for bad yeah. if you channel your fame in a good direction then you get good fruits from it mm-hmm. if you channel it in the wrong direction and you put out weird like piece content and weird energy like you get what you give really yeah but um fame is also very nice that's why like i'm saying it's like a drug you've never tasted mm. fame is nice because fame just it's a cheat code for living life mm. people spend money to be known yeah people spend money for association and just having it on your fingertips is great it, there's a, now there's a downside also for fame yeah. like yo fame is fame is lonely as you said yeah uh fame is also a fallacy because you and you can drink your Kool-Aid and get drunk and get lost in it yeah. i've seen it happen to people around me mm. i've seen i've been lucky to have a bunch of brothers that have kept me grounded yeah. you included yeah but film right. is just that about money mm-hmm. what hey. do you know for sure i don't know anything <laughs> for sure about money <laughs> i'll say like in my life i've cracked all kinds of code <laughs> hey but money and it's not because i i didn't come from money yeah um i'm learning no you had a pretty day. decent upbringing i mean it's you decent. were in kilimani most what, of the time what, what is money now what is money to you that's what i'm saying like i don't consider where i came from to be coming from money yeah uh maybe live because your school fees nearly for nearly all there yeah the, no the but roots. now as uh, an accomplished artist now as an accomplished artist what i know about money is that it's an energy mm. as well and what you give in terms of work the force that that that, that you know gives back is is mm. now money mm. uh, when i say also money is an energy you can be able to move money without having it in your bank account yeah. obama is not the wealthiest man in the world but if obama wanted a billion shillings today he would get a you billion would. shillings yeah. if you can you, you can look at money like that but also i think it's very um important to understand the traditional uh, understanding of money investment and the things that have brought the world's wealthiest to where they are yeah because stability financial stability is something you want in your life for you to be able to achieve you know what you want travel i don't want to make an assumption but i am reminded of a story mm. i was living in cape town we were on the phone with you and you went back and forth about this woman you just met <laughs> <laughs> and you're really fascinated wait when was this this 2000 is, and before this is, uh, uh, this my, is no 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 you are now guys. wife no no you are now wife oh you are now wife mm-hmm. so you are telling me how Eriko, you won't believe it. This woman wakes up and reads, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you know for sure about love? What I know for sure about love that uh, eh, that love. I need to think about this for a minute. <laughs> There's nothing I know for sure about love. I'm still really? learning how to love. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm learning about love every day. Uh, yeah. About marriage. About marriage, what do I know? For sure. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Except... Oh my goodness. A, a, a marriage is a team sport. Mm. And uh, a lot of times, like, people get married for the wrong things. But if you're getting married for the right things, and your team sport is building a dynasty, of, yeah. and then I don't mean dynasty in the way it's been bastardized here in Kenya, just like positive, you know, black excellence of... Families that are well off and that mm -hmm. are giving their children a better quality of life. Yeah. Uh, marriage is the best place to do that because monogamy for the last 300 years has really cemented itself as a system. Yeah. So even how you pay your taxes, you, bet, you get better subsidies, subsidies if you're married. There's things you get when you're married, like in your place of work, people will respect you a lot more when you're married. There are opportunities that are there for people that are married for a reason because it's a, it's a form of stability that society, uh, whatever, like taps on the back yeah however mm -hmm. you have to get into marriage knowing that no day in marriage is like the one before because your partner will always be changing and that's what i know for a fact that's a good answer man yeah i um we 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 traded stories for a long time i think you're one of the few friends i have who we can go on the phone for long and when we meet we talk for long one time you were at my house when we were neighbors and I was telling you a story about a woman who done me in. I don't know if you remember this. And um, you, you told me, wait one minute, do you have a pen and a paper? And then I gave you a pen and a paper. <laughs> then you came back to the living room and you were humming a tune. Even before you answer one thing you know for sure, I know you as one of the most gifted artists because you can take a real life scenario the last time we were at a party together, I remember that time I, we were in Lovington and then mm. we went to a house party. Mm. Even then, I could hear you taking conversations and turning, them, and into turning them into songs. Yeah. What do you know for sure about music and music writing? Hey, what I know for sure is practice makes permanent. Yeah. Yeah, like being a slave of your trade is how much time you put into your craft. When I travel the, the world and meet individuals who have made a big mark on the, in their fields mm. man these guys are doing 17 hour days yeah you know these guys are doing 17 hour days and they've been doing that since they were four mm. so like my challenge to musicians who are young in this country especially and in the world yeah your competition is out there putting in hours in practice mm. so like you really need to practice and know your craft know your instrument and as a songwriter i write a song every day you daily know? yeah daily and it, it, it doesn't have to be the complex way of going to studio sitting down and writing the song yeah. it's just humming the tunes as you said mm. and recording things in voice notes in my phone yeah. and then like following up on that and doing it consistently until it, it becomes second nature yeah i think i write a song easier than i write an essay that's interesting yeah no no i've seen you do it and um you know what also is fascinating for me as having the advantage of witnessing your behind the curtains I remember once we were in the studio, you just, I think it was Nerea. Mm. And we went to the studio, uh, Jabula, Bruce Odiembo's. Oh, Bruce Odiembo's studio. And yeah. we went to the studio at noonish. And uh, I left you guys at midnight. And you told me you left the studio at five in the morning. And you're working on one song. Time flies when you're having fun, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you know why I thought that was fascinating? Because what is often shown, especially in the social media world we live in, people show us the filtered highlights mm -hmm. of their life and their careers. Just talk a little about what goes into even just, you know, making the song. The process can mm -hmm. be anything from an hour to 10 hours to, to different days. Because like, you know, I think a song is like making a meal. You have yeah, the ingredients. Yeah. It's just how do you mix them right? And, you know, you could listen to a song today and then you listen to it and it's sounding fantastic. And then tomorrow you don't like it at all. Yeah. Then you have to revisit. 
yeah. and work things around. Men, I'd say a song like Susanna, we redid, we have like three, four different versions yeah. of the same song yeah. until you find it right. So you cook the recipe until you get it right. I don't like how I, I we say if I do a, a web series, the ones I do, if I listen to it, I won't post it. Oh. Do you have songs you've not released? Yeah, a lot of that. But but also, like I've also learned, um, Nipsey Hussle's mom said, you should empty yourself. Yeah. And I'm just out here emptying myself right now. I realized that I was keeping a lot of songs in a song bank as if yes. tomorrow is guaranteed. And so I'm in a season in my life now where I'm putting out my expression a lot. Yeah. And also like Beethoven and all of these classical writers that you hear of who wrote 300 years ago. Mm. Those guys, the symphonies that they are known for are maybe like five, six, yeah. seven mm. per person. Mm. But they did like 600. Absolutely. And yeah. even I was, I was talking to Tricky Stewart, who is a, an American producer. We were working with in Joe Bug the other day. Tricky is the producer of all the single ladies, all the single yeah, ladies. Yeah. Justin Bieber's baby al the, uh, debut album is Tricky Stewart. Um, Rihanna's Umbrella yeah, Ella is yeah, Tricky Stewart. Yeah. Like he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a big, he's a big deal. Yeah. And you're telling me like, in your career, you'll only be remembered for three songs. Oh, wow. You know, like, when you're talking about someone in the eulogy, you say, Bien, Aliimba. Nishike. Always is that. Always is that my bald man <laughs> love <laughs> better. Like, it's it about two, three songs. It or Lazizi. It's the three biggest tracks. Like, like Lazizi has yeah. really stuck with Saudi. It's about the, the three biggest tracks. I told you, I said, I'm going to go to Saudi. But I'm going to go to Tatu Kubwa. Lazimu Fanya Kazi Mob. No, it's true because. You're telling me Beyonce records 70 songs. Before she puts out an album, really? Yeah, Maze. You only work wow. epic in Guinea, yeah, insane. That's, that's the thing I, I find fascinating about Americans. They are really extreme uh, extremists in the thing they do. Mm. I once went swimming when I was living in the States with this guy, and he swam like he was competing in the Olympics. And that's just how they swim. Yeah. And I was just like, that's amazing. And uh, speaking of, um, you know, bulk work, Obama, when a story is told of how he was asked, to come on the podium by John Kerry's team. Mm. In fact, John Kerry didn't know him. Somebody said, there's this young black guy from Illinois who speaks mm. really well. He'd make our convention look good. Yeah. And John Kerry asked, is he really good? He said, no, no, no. He's been giving talks in campuses and mm. he's a community organizer. Mm. And that one speech, it remember that like, we are not the green America, we're not the blue America, we're not the red America. Mm. We are the United States of America. That's the speech that propelled him into the presidency. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. It's just always one thing. What's your most cherished trait? Hey, I hope that it. I hope I'm known for love. I mean, like I did my things with love, passionately. I love people who are around me. Like you know, I tried my best to be a loving human being. Yeah. That's what I want to cherish the most. I want people to listen to my music and feel like their soul is hugging them, like feel loved. Yeah. Yeah. And the opposite of that, what are you struggling with? What am I struggling with? Uh, masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know that's what you wanted me to say. I, I, I struggle with different things at different times. Mm. Yeah. But I just struggle with myself, like any human being who's growing. Like the main struggle you have ever is you. Yeah. The main barrier to you achieving that. Eric, who you think is, is just Eric still. Yeah. So I struggle every day to just show up for myself. Mm. And that's crazy, man. Like, every, everything I do now, in, anytime I'm in a forum talking, every, anytime I'm on stage playing, ever since COVID happened, hey, I'm representing, man. Yeah. I'm giving my heart and my soul because I'm like, this might be the first time someone is seeing me here. This might Absolutely. be the break, yeah. you know. Yeah. I didn't treat it like that in the past. I was just flowing in the current. You never know who's in the audience. Yeah. You never know who's in the audience. That's all the time we had for, man. Thank you so hey. much. I appreciate you. Um, thank you for all the wonderful work you do. And uh, I was trying much as I can not to make it as though we were in, <laughs> <laughs> in a compo and talking. Yeah. If you have a question or something you need clarity on, hit BN on the comment section down yeah, below. Yeah. He'll answer it. I thought I captured 
most of your heart and mind and uh, thank you my friend all hey, the best asante pia my friend for just being a good friend to me man i'm so grateful mm. yeah every day okay you should uh, the next interview we do you should come with the three things that stand out for you that i've done oh <laughs> three things me just think i i can't box you you know me you can say three things about bn but you eric i can't box you in three things no you, there are many you're a star player you like you show up every day oh man thank it's you a so much. thing yeah no, thank you so much you're one of the voices in my head when i'm making a decision Oh that's that's yeah. that's very kind. Yeah. And I'm Even the sure. bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's very kind. Thank you so much. That was Eric stories. Let's make it big and better. And uh, let me know what you think. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Email Wesa. You're the best interview.